Hello people, I'm going to read you now from a whole short story which is called New Mexico. It's in my book that's supposed to be being launched this spring. In fact, it's self-isolating this spring. Uh, the book is called We Are Attempting to Survive Our Time as the months and years while I was writing it have gone by. It's become obviously far too appropriate Um I hope you enjoy this. It'll be in three parts. Uh, probably every possible trigger warning I could give you should maybe think about before you listen. Certainly not suitable for children. Uh, I am going to be putting some other stuff on probably also today that is suitable for children. Uh, but this will be in three approximately 20 minute lumps and you'll get a whole short story which is a kind of a short story of a podcast, so it seemed kind of appropriate. Uh, it will be in a very bad American accent, for which I apologize in advance, but, you know, what can I do? Hi, my name is Phoebe Del Rey, and this is PTP, and here we go again. And would you believe it, this is episode 100 of our mother-loving post-traumatic podcast, the PTP. We made it. And because this is a special occasion, I have no guest. Usually, we like a variety of voices and perspectives on the old cases and the cold cases and the issues we look at. And personally, I love our forensic and legal deep dives. I love our forensic guests, and I know you do too. And our legal guests. None of our guests are illegal, because no person is illegal. And that I have to point this out, fries my brain. We truly live in horrible, horrible times, but then we always kind of have, and sometimes it hits one type of people, and sometimes it hits another, which is partly why we have this show, for the people who get hit more often than not. Anyway, I have no guests this episode, and I will eventually tell you why. There will be an explanation. But first, I am so sorry for goddamn noise. I thought I'd come back to my home studio here where I started out to record our 100th episode. Some of you listening were with me way back then. Thank you for sticking around. If you scroll down on the site, you can find the early parts and the early, I think we can say, basic sound quality. Enjoy that on your walk around waterproof Bluetooth speakers. And right now, as you can hear, we are having just the most Colorado type of Colorado hailstorm. Crazy hailstones, pretty much the size of softballs, are happening right now. This is what we get out here. Big weather, the mountain weather. And of course, we have the wolves and wolverines and bears and those yellow-bellied marmots. Sure, they never did a wrong deed to anyone, those marmots, but you can see in their eyes that if they were bigger, they would try. They are not yellow-bellied. They are waiting to evolve and grow. It's a little bit of a death paradise out here, with the storms and the snows and the animals, including the small, resentful marmots, and that's before you add the people. As we know, the greatest and most dangerous and prolific and imaginative predators on Earth would be the people. Thanks, though, on this special occasion to all of you amazing non-predator people who are not monsters in human clothing and who've got me through this far. Thanks for your messages, as ever, and for signing up to support what I do and therefore paying for the cool website and the snazzy editing and the technical stuff from Loretta the Genius. There has to be one Loretta on every high-quality podcast. She's here, too, up in the thin Colorado air. Hello as well to all of you who showed up at the live gig in Brooklyn last week. We had such a blast. Also, thank you for the sugar skulls. So many of you are my sugar mamas and sugar daddies, and we love those sugar skulls even just because they are an expression of care and solidarity. Never mind that they let you eat death and crap it right back out again, or that it celebrates and warms the cold certainty of the grave and all of that. 
we got lordy about 48 Birkeland skulls I think which is enough to put Loretta and me into some kind of coma so some of them went to other good places and people great to know so many people get my Dia de los Muertos obsessions gonna get me a new Calaveritas de Azucar tattoo on the other arm this very week in fact a skull with the marigolds under the chin and a desert bluebell in each eye. There was a blue, blue, just the bluest Mojave flowers if you have not come across them. They spring up after rains in the desert, and I would say they make the land the sky. That's the plan for this week after we wrap the show. I'll be getting my fifth tattoo, turning pain into beauty because we can. It will be on a significant date, and it will also celebrate this 100th installment of fun. I'll have a high, big day of ink, and then come down off that endorphin high, chill a little, and then get the research done for next week, which will be a stellar week for you. Many, many great guests. I'll post photos of the latest skull as soon as it's all healed. And finally... Before we really, really get going, I have to recommend the great products of On Your Road Security. On Your Road makes stylish but sturdy bags designed specifically for the female traveler. That means everything fits your body and your spine and the straps aren't catering only to the six-foot jarhead kind of human on the move. The military have travel gear of their own, goddammit. Some of us are dainty and we want our shit to stay safe, right? That's why On Your Road provides slash-proof pockets, tamper-proof locks, and extendable cables for those locks so you can lasso your bag to a table or a bench or a six-foot jar head or such. There is a full range of colors and designs, and most have a convenient solar panel recharger gizmo, which has rescued me muchly when I have a script to write or research to do, and I'm out of juice, on the move, and there are no PowerPoints. Yes, I stay in the classier hotels now, but that was not always the case. And On Your Road is great for your less tech-friendly accommodation options and for those long bus rides and whatnot. When your motel host is over fond of stuffed animals and looks at you and asks, What's the internet? You have On Your Road. I mostly use the Amagordo travel purse and the Sioux Falls carry-on. That's a combination which makes sense of all my weird talismanic shit and squares it away. I can find things in the many sane and adjustable storage areas. None of the bags ever has to have a black interior that instantly loses your crap in some kind of existential outer space shadow land. I picked the interior color. There's a whole color chart you can select from, and I chose call cathar of vitriol because that is a real color not an elf king or a walk on nude in game of thrones the colors available are popping and wonderful and the attention to design detail and construction lets me know that on your road are people like us obsessive compulsive paranoics who are putting that energy to positive use and we need to stay personally safe on our road. So every luggage item has an easy to reach alarm, which is loud as hell. Most bags include a high power torch. You can either use to guide down a landing aircraft and find lost contact lenses in neighboring states or to blind an attacker. Some also feature a highly accessible, harmless, aircraft-safe color dye spray if you want to tag that asshole who just tried something, or a pepper spray if that's legal where you are. Your stuff will be safe. You will be safe. You will look like a superhero enjoying her well-earned downtime. And if you're a gentleman of more slender build, you can be safe too. What else can I say? I'd be endorsing this even if they didn't pay me to, but they do, which is cool. You too can live this life, be given free shit, and paid to enjoy it. Believe in yourself, be true to that, follow your joy, and wait a whole bunch of years until you've pretty much given up on the world as a merciful place. That's when it all works out. Resist those impulses to self-harm just so you can own your torment, hang on tight, and then the free stuff and fun starts happening. 
We paid in advance though, right? We paid in advance. Anywho, back to PTP. Last week we looked at some of the Ted Bundy survivors like Kathy Kleiner who was attacked in Chi Omega House at Florida State where she had every reason to expect she would be secure, able to sleep and wake up unharmed. After the attacks, she was found rocking back and forth, face covered in blood, some of her teeth in the bedclothes, jaw broken, just rocking, and managing to ask for her boyfriend at the time and her pastor, which is heartbreaking. She was just a sweet young woman assaulted murderously in her sleep by a coward. There in the same room was Karen Chandler, she was also horribly beaten with a wooden branch by a monster who doesn't get to be called handsome or intelligent. Bundy the killer's current public status is smart and cute. Just means that he gamed the media like he tried to game law enforcement, the legal system and the wider world in his pursuit of opportunities to kill women and rape them before and after that. He groomed the media. He made himself what they wanted him to be, this big mystery. Oh, how come an attractive guy is a maniac? Look at his eyes. Look at his hole-in-the-ground empty eyes. Look at that secret smile he gets, which normal people misunderstand. In a standard-issue human being, that kind of smile is flirtatious. That smile is about sharing a secret with one other person, probably something sexual. It's the expression of a person you either already know or will enjoy knowing because they're trying to guess what you might like. That's the secret. They're trying to understand you and the secrets of what you both like. That's not what Bundy's smile is about. Bundy is redefining you and you don't know it. That's the secret. It's all his secret. He is smiling because he knows that he can kill you at any time that he can turn you into a screaming puppet or a decapitated body that he can have sex with or whatever else occurs to him, whatever he has time for. His secret is that you're wrong when you assume you have a right to live or to expect that civilization will exist everywhere you go. His secret is your being alive isn't permanent, that your identity doesn't matter. That's not flirtatious, that's demonic. And every time he flashed his grin, the media lapped it up, the shutters clicked, the cameras rolled, even though it was an insult to everyone alive, especially women. He gets that smile when he's able to put his traumatized victims on the stand and just stroke his way back through the crimes. Or when he makes a cop describe every detail of the crime scenes, the wreckage Bundy made. He longed for everyone to itemize those super sweet details of horror and dominance for him. He's a creep and a predator who didn't get into a good school or get great qualifications. He was no genius. He had one purpose, being a horror machine that killed women. He was good at satisfying his own perverse needs because that was all he ever thought about, all that mattered. He wasn't distracted by saving someone pain or loving someone or understanding anyone other than himself as anything other than a mark. Broadcasters, even back then, would rather give screen time to a narcissist freak than, oh my God, no, this would shock people, give the appalling details of crimes which would show him for the monster he is. He's the kind of man who would bite off a young woman's nipple. Let's just say that. He's a man who would kill a 12-year-old girl. Kimberly Leach, remember her name. Forget his. That's shocking. It's supposed to be shocking. Finding that shocking keeps us all safe. I know I talk about this a lot. But we have this horrendous situation where everyone knows fucking Bundy's name, but not the names of his victims. Those poor, sweet, slaughtered women that he tortured and mutilated because he was a rage-filled asshole tormented by his grandiosity while it fought with his many immense, obvious inadequacies. 
And he was a Republican Party campaigner, of course. Psychopaths will always advocate for political systems they hope will let them hunt and feed at will. And feel free to buy my book, What to Do When a Narcissist Asshole Takes Over Your Country. It is now available at all good bookstores and online from the website. It's a wonderful Thanksgiving gift. You can send a copy to all those relatives you can no longer talk to over Thanksgiving because a black man was elected president in 2008 and their penises have not grown back to full size ever since. So now they can't stop yelling about how they are being replaced. Thanksgiving's a tricky, yeah? For many reasons. Or you can just buy the book for your personal reading pleasure. Some of us have families we were born with and can give thanks for, and some of us make families of choice. We can all make a place of love and eat pumpkin pie and safety together with those we love whenever we like, not just on an anniversary of colonial genocide and turkey murder. So there's that. My family is not a problem at Thanksgiving. It's not around, as some of you will know. That's a different problem, no longer having a birth family, but I have my family of choice, and I have my tattoos, and my ass-kicking life. <laughs>